We're here today, right? We're, we're in the future. Welcome, welcome. So it's really fun to be here. Um, my team flew over uh, mostly from the US, so it's uh, great to be across the pond. Um, we're super excited to be a sponsor here, but also to run the, uh, the app uh, that MadFest is using for this event. Um, you all are very familiar with MadFest. Uh, super exciting. I'm curious, how many folks have come to a MadFest before? Any, any repeat offenders? Any veterans? OK. And everybody else, is this is your first time? Excellent. Um, this is literally one of the most creative, inspiring, innovative events uh, right there on the world stage. A lot of um, marketers, event planners are looking to MadFest for inspiration. And the reason is because it's combining technology, experience, content in just a really fun venue and making marketers feel like we're at home, right? Um, so we're WebEx Events, formerly Socio. We power the MadFest event app and also the virtual venue that our virtual audience is accessing today for the live stream. And we can do registration, badge printing, all this kind of stuff. Um, so really, really proud of the MadFest team. They've done such an amazing job here. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about kind of the future events, where we've been, where we're going, try to give you some tactical takeaways that you can use for your events or if your team or clients uh, host them yourself. You know, a couple years ago, most events were in person, just like this. Um, and your virtual events were really limited to short little webinars, right? One hours, PowerPoints, Q&A. During the pandemic, we were all virtual. And event technology just had to innovate at light speed uh, to enable all that kind of rich participation and engagement that we, we get at things like this. And that's left us in a position today where we're really in a hybrid event world, which means that you can run an event of many different formats that has all those digital elements. Um, and we've seen this kind of play out with our data, right? Uh, the bottom color is uh, virtual only events, which you see you know, during the 2020 kind of pandemic year. That's pretty much all we we're doing. But where we are today, it's really evenly split between all virtual events, in-person only events, and what we call a truly hybrid event, which is what MadFest is. So uh, an in-person event has a ton of engagement opportunities, right? You can meet people sitting in a chair, standing in line for a loo or a beer, whereas at a virtu virtual only event, you know, you don't have quite as many engagement opportunities, but there are some constraints, right? You can only fit so many marketers in a pub or a venue like this, whereas a virtual event gives you unlimited scale, right? You can have hundreds of thousands of attendees. And a hybrid event actually uh, brings all of those audiences together, hybrid um, attendance. So I'm going to play another quick video uh, after this. Um, MadFest has done a really fa fantastic job leaning into this kind of hybrid event world. Last year was their first hybrid event. They had about 8,000 total attendees. This year they have far exceeded that number. So while we're all sitting here, there are thousands of folks joining us uh, from all across the globe uh, watching through the live stream. Um, We've had a, a lot of experience with a wide range of events ourselves. In fact, we were forced to move our big flagship event, WebEx One, to all virtual last year. We, we ran it on our own platform. Um, we had 75,000 people. But what was really fun is we actually brought our most important speakers into certain physical venues so that their sessions were kind of performed live, right, with a nice backdrop, even though all of the audience was watching from their, you know, their laptops at, at home. Um, the really cool thing about virtual events, though, is you can add all these other engagement features. You know, chat, closed captions, with uh, you know, so folks can actually read along or even uh, see it in different languages. You can have sign uh, language or even audio translation through the virtual venue. And virtual events mean that you can bring speakers who maybe you can't afford to fly in, you know, to join you on stage. Folks like Simone Biles uh, for kind of a shorter virtual appearance. So having that virtual component or doing a virtual event obviously gives you a lot of flexibility. Now, what marketers are really leaning into right now is understanding that events are actually a, uh, an experience that goes beyond the day, the moment of the event itself. There's a pre-event and a post-event experience as well, and technology can really support that. Um, there's a lot of bits to that, you know, registration, there's the pre-event access, maybe logging into the venue and starting to make connections. During the event, you've got to uh, accommodate accessibility, live streaming, attendee networking. Um, and I'll show another video just to give you some, some kind of feeling for all those elements, right? You all probably checked in with your QR code, you got your badge scan, right? That's all part of an all-in-one event technology. And the goal is to make it quick, seamless, and easy for the attendee, but also really, really like um, easy for the event organizer to host things like this, right? Where you have all the services, the hardware, the technology that you need to host an event of scale. Um, you know, what I love about kind of this end-to-end -end event management approach is you can also solve for things that sponsors need and exhibitors, right? So whether you're hosting sponsors in a venue like this and you've got people with really cool picnic tables or in your traditional trade show expo hall, 
a sponsor needs ROI, right? We want to collect leads. We want to have engagement at our booth. We want to have things that people can touch and feel. And so event technology today is also supporting the sponsor and the exhibitor experience, right? Um, they can get leads not just by scanning people, but by having people interact with their virtual booth, uh, or even playing the game in the event, um, chatting with them, interacting with them before the event or after the event, right? And it's really actually made it a lot easier to get sponsorship dollars to support your event, not just ticket sales and relying on attendees. Building this kind of thing, like Madfest did today, it's really simple. It's drag and drop, right? It's kind of like WordPresses for websites, WebEx events, and other platforms allow you to host really an event of any size of any type at scale really easily. You don't need to know code to do it. Um, and for the attendees, it means that they can be joining from a laptop, from the office, from their desktop, on their mobile phone, or attending here in person, right? And so that flexibility, that sort of hybrid experience is really where, where the, the future is, and we're living it today. Um, we support ticketing, registration. Um, so, so when you think about that end-to-end -end experience, right? It starts with your marketing. It starts with you know the landing page that they get to, um, what ticket options they have, whether you're offering discount to codes, tiered ticketing, and all of that can be supported by the event technology itself. So you don't have to cobble together sort of different technology tools to do it. You can actually all do it with, in one place. All right. So there's a few other big themes I want to touch on. I've only got a few minutes. Um, Real-time engagement, gamification, and collaboration. These are three themes that are emerging. You know, if you've got good content and good speakers at the event, you know, that's the first step. But now you've got to lean into these other three areas. So gamification um, and attendee networking are really important. And in attendee networking, I actually um, love this one feature on our app. I know you've probably all got the MadFest event app. If you've got it open right now, I want to um, have you Go find at the very bottom, there's a little shake feature. And if you click that, uh, it's called a shake to connect, right? You can either just touch it or you can just shake your phone. If everybody does it right now, it's actually going to locate everybody around you, right? And it'll build a list of suggested attendees that you can network with and interact. And that's really fun for an in person event because you can kind of get folks in a room or in line to, to meet each other. The other thing that we want to do is um, give people opportunities to kind of like have some friendly competition. So we all love a good spinny wheel, but there's also a way you can add a digital game to your event, uh, kind of like a scavenger hunt. And this is a great way to motivate people to explore content. So for example, you can hide codes with a sponsor's booth, or maybe in a keynote presentation, or make people like do some work to get a code. And of course, then they can rise up on the leaderboard. You can display the game leaderboard on a screen in your venue. Um, and motivate people to kind of participate and engage. And folks love a little friendly competition. And of course, give them prizes, free tickets to the next event. Uh, all those things will drive engagement for your future events as well. All right, we all need maps, we need agendas, we need ways to explore and add things to our schedule. So that's pretty much table stakes at events these days. Live display, we're, it, we're seeing increasing use of user-generated content as actually a core part of the event. So you've all probably seen the social wall here. You can post to that, kind of see each other's content. You can actually also bring that into big screens throughout the venue. Um, and that's a really effective way to kind of make people the, the part of the story. Um, sponsors love getting uh, you know, in-person booths, but there's only so many people you can scan and talk to. So you've got to set them up with like a virtual presence as well. And that can actually 10x the number of leads they can get, the number of sponsors that we as attendees can interact with. And it also helps makes it easier to kind of curate and keep a list of people that we want to engage with afterwards. All right. Everybody needs badges and lead retrieval scanners. So make sure if you're hosting events, uh, you set your sponsors and exhibitors up with a, an easy way to scan leads. It's probably the biggest reason for ROI. It's also the reason why most events are now seeing about 50% of their revenue as coming from sponsors, the other 50% from self-funding or ticket sales. Now, you can also embed kind of web-based uh, applications within the event app itself. So you know, maybe you have something cool on a website. You don't have to rebuild it inside your event app. You just add it as a feature. It'll load right in the event app. Um, and there's a lot of third-party tools these days. There's a whole ecosystem of event technology that is emerging, including virtual selfie booths, uh, where you can add little custom branding icons. Uh, that kind of curates a gallery of all the folks. And then you, as marketers, can use that uh, in your future marketing. And it also creates this nice kind of sense of community among your attendees that they can refer back to. Um, closed captions is a key part of accessibility. So you know, these days, it's important to make sure that people can attend in a way that's uh, best for them. Closed captions is one of those ingredients. Uh, we offer that natively. It's included just as part of our, um, our event platform at WebEx Events. And you can also view those captions in different languages. So that's another important feature. All right. Um, 
We're seeing increasing use of on-demand video, so a lot of speakers are actually recording videos in advance and then using that to promote themselves, uh, as well as their, um, their organizers and other folks. Uh, Slido for word clouds, polls, quizzes, and other key ingredients. Whiteboards is a collaboration tool that you can add even before your event begins to get people engaging and sharing ideas. Um, and of course, all this technology can really power any kind, any size of events from trade shows to summits to expos like we have here. Um, so thank you so much for coming to join. Uh, really glad you came to MadFest. Uh, really proud and humbled to be able to sponsor and uh, provide the app for this experience. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions, suggestions, feedback, come find us. We've got a picnic table right over there in the corner. We've got some fun swag. And if you host events yourself or, uh, or know anybody who does, uh, please come sign up for a demo or a chat afterwards. We'd love to chat. Thank you so much. Wait, wait one second, thanks so much. Um, right, this super impressive. Um, whiteboards before events, what's going on? <laughs> Seems totally crazy to me, but uh, such a, so many cool, lots of little ideas. So what are events gonna look like in, in two years, in five years time? Oh gosh, you know, I think we're gonna see, I mean, everybody's leaning into the concept of the metaverse or 3D interaction, right? I think that's gonna be the cusp of innovation. Some of the big brands are really looking into that. Um, but I do think the hybrid world is actually going to make it so that maybe you're thinking right now, small scale, I'm doing an event for people in England, right, or France. Your audience can be global, right? Like we can really foster a global community and, and, it's, and the technology is there now. So you can, maybe right world. now you've been limited to, you know, 500 attendees in your, in your small venue. Think bigger. You know, you can fit 50,000 people on their laptops, right? More ticket sales, more engagement. You just got to lean into this sort of hybrid future uh, and think about sort of your audience as, as much more than just who's local. Thank you so much. Can you get a round of applause? Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Okay.